By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are back at the Dutch X-Points Open for our final episode. We are in the finals and the finals are between uh, Emil and he's playing with a zoo deck. It's green, red and blue and it's got a lot of creatures in it and a lot of burn. And he's taking on Johan and we've seen Johan's deck uh, last week as well. He's playing blue, black and red, the Swamp King deck. And he's got Underworld Dreams, he's got some discard action, he's got some draw sevens. It's a pretty spectacular deck as well. So this is really a classic of the Giants. Both of these decks are, I believe, undefeated. I'm not quite sure. Maybe they have one loss each. But anyway, they're the best decks here in the field. And remember, this is 50 players playing six rounds in total. This is the last round, the finals. And I'm really looking forward to, uh, to discuss this match with you and look at the match together. And in a moment, I'm going to jump into the deck decks. I've got lovely deck photos of both of these decks. But before I do, I would first like to point out that, as always, you can also choose to go to the games first, check out the deck decks later. I know some people prefer to do it that way. Uh, the easiest way to do this is by checking out the description below. There you will find several timestamps. One of the timestamps reads MTG Games. Click on there, it'll take you straight to the games. And in that description, you will also find a little link to my Patreon page. And uh, please consider becoming a patron of the show because that's a way how you can support the content that I make. So if you enjoy the content that I make, please consider becoming a patron of the show. Check out patreon.com slash timmytalks for more information. Okay, and now I'm going to continue with the deck decks. I'm going to start with the deck of Emil. Let's take a look. And here we see the deck of a mule. So I've called this uh, a zoo deck. I think I think it is a zoo deck, right? It's got a lot of smaller creatures. It's blue. It's green. Uh, it's red. It's all it's in there as well. So we've got those three colors going. And I mean, when I see Kurt Ape, I got, always got to think of a zoo deck. So Kurt Ape is a one one, and uh, when you play a force, it gets plus one plus two. So it combos off really well with Taiga. And I just remember when I started Magic in Revised Era, when I was a young Timmy, um, you know, a lot of people played Taiga, Kurt Ape, Go. You know, that was kind of half of the LGS that was playing that. So it's really, um, yeah, for me, a very uh, nostalgic feel to kind of see those two cards uh, coming together. And it's still a good combination in today's old school meta. Then when we look at the other creatures, we just see a lot of quick, aggressive creatures. Here's Scavenger Folk, which of course is great. The creature from the dark a 1-1 one, one that you can also sack to destroy an artifact, so that's perfect. Um, then you've got Argovian Pixies, kind of the anti Mishra's Factory card, right? Because it cannot be blocked by artifacts, and also damage dealt to it by artifact. Artifact is reduced to zero, so your um, your Triskelion is not going to take care of this one toughness creature. And then, of course, we have the bad boy, the Surrendip Afrit, a 3-4 flyer for three, what's not to love? And this deck comes very close to just an Arabian aggro deck, um, sometimes I'm confusing these decks as well. I think the reason that this is more for me a zoo deck than an Arabian aggro deck is because he didn't go for the Urnum Jins. If you would also go for the Urnum Jins here, that would actually work in this deck. Maybe you can then go Lana or Elves or Birds of Paradise and add Urnum Jins. The problem, of course, is when you do that is that you become very vulnerable to City in a Bottle, right? So I think it's a good decision here not to go with that and choose to go for another creature that's also cheaper to cast. So it's going a little bit more on speed. And um, talking about speed, that fits together perfectly well with the big, huge burn package in this deck, right? Four psionic blasts, four chain lightnings, four lightning bolts. I mean, this deck can win on burn alone. Like, if you're just having a pretty bad day on the on the battlefield, it doesn't really matter that much as long as you just keep drawing your, your uh, direct damage and you can just finish your opponent that way. So it's always dangerous to play against these decks, especially since he combines it with a lot of draw sevens, right? Because those draw sevens are going to help you to find those final points of burn that you need to win the game. Now, talking about draw sevens in this matchup, that's going to be quite interesting because Yoan is playing with Underworld Dreams and draw sevens as well. And I think Underworld Dreams could be a key card here because uh, Emil is not playing with any enchantment removal. So it's going to be really tough. He does have two Tranquilities in the side, but I can really see a game unfolding here where Emil is going to lose against those Underworld Dreams. I think the Underworld Dreams is really the biggest, baddest weapon that his opponent Johan has. And I think for Emil, what's his biggest weapon is simply the fact that he can go really fast with this deck. He's got a lot of burn, so he just wants to finish it as quickly as he can. But as soon as Johan can start doing his Underworld Dream stuff, 
is going to be really tough for Emil. You know, at least that's my humble prediction. Talking about uh, the deck of Johan, let's take a look at his deck, uh, his uh, uh, blue, black, red Swamp King Brew. And here we see the deck of Johan. So this is three colors, right? Black, blue, and red. Now, the first thing that I notice is for someone who's playing black and red, he is missing a creature that almost everybody auto includes, which is the Sedge Troll. So I am actually happy that he didn't. I always love to see players doing something else. And then when we zoom into what he wants to do with red, well, actually, he only wants to burn. Mainly, he's got Fireball, Disintegrate, and Four Bolts. So you don't need a lot of red mana to have this red. He also has a Wheel of Fortune, by the way. I think Draw Sevens are kind of a theme here because we also see the Time Twister, which is, again, kind of interesting because you're also playing a discard strategy with him to Turek. And sometimes that can be counterproductive, right? Because you're first forcing your opponent to discard cards and then you play a Draw Seven. But I guess... You're, of course, the one who's timing when you do what. And that's that's key to these kind of strategies, right? You are in control. You decide when you want to go for that draw seven or when you want to go for that him play. And you order it in a way that is beneficial to you. But then, of course, it does make it a little bit harder for you, you know, piloting the deck. But I, I like those kind of things, you know. Um, and, of course, those draw sevens go together really, really well with the Underworld Dreams. Underworld Dreams, a card for three black from Legends and Enchantment that simply reads, anytime your opponent draws a card, the opponent takes a damage, right? That's basically what it does. So if you uh, play Wheel of Fortune or a Time Twister, your opponent is going to take seven damage if you just have one Underworld Dreams in play. If you have two in play, it's 14 damage. So it's quite good. And again, what we see here is that Johan didn't go fully for that Underworld Dream strategy. He didn't board in Winds of Change, for example. So it's he's got a lot of strategies all tucked in one because his deck can also go quite fast. He's playing with like a, a three order of the Ebon Hands, not a full playset. I want to say a playset off, but it's not a full playset. Three order of the Ebon Hands, which can be really useful in this matchup because they're pro-white. He's playing with, of course, four hypnotic specters. You know, then you can go Dark Ritual into Hippie. Although I think... Maybe you'd rather go Dark Ritual into Underworld Dreams with this deck. And then we also see uh, some bigger creatures, the two Sengir Vampires, and of course, Solkanar, the Swamp King. And I think Solkanar, the thing is you need the mana. That's the problem with Solkanar. But if you have the blue, the black, the red, then you get a 5-5 five, five for 5 that has Swamp Walk, which is not relevant in this match, but still. And you gain a life every time a black spell is being cast, which can be kind of relevant because he's playing with a lot of black spells. So yeah, this is... Um, this is looking like a strong deck, and I think I think if you do it right. What I also like, by the way, maybe last thing here to mention is that one icy manipulator with the two paralyzes. I think is kind of nice. I like I like those you know cute little tricks. Uh, paralyze, of course, an enchant creature for one taps the creature down. Then the opponent has to pay four to untap it, and then you can tap that again with the icy, and he has to pay four again. And he, remember, he can only do that during the upkeep. So if you have a paralyzed and icy out, your opponent is probably never going to untap that creature right and i think especially against emil who's playing arabian aggro there are a lot of these you know early early pressure creatures and uh, paralyzed can just be a great card against uh, against that pressure talking about that uh, we've discussed the deck of johan we've looked at the deck of emil so that only means one thing we are ready for the finals of the dutch x points open 2024 here we go Game number one of the finals here, the Dutch X Points Open. Let's go. It's Emil, I believe, on the play. He's playing his Zoo deck, and he's starting with a Scavenger Folk, so a 1 1 hitting the board. There we see Johan. He's playing uh, blue, black, and red with uh, Soul Canard, the Swamp King, starting with the Batlands. Taking a damage here from Emil. It's going to drop to 19. And let's see if we have a follow up play. A Curd Ape, perhaps another Scavenger Folk, so another 1 1. And there we're going to see a bolt on one of the scavengers. I think if you're Emil, you don't mind that too much. You know, point those bolts at the smaller creatures. Are we going to see him to Turek now from Johan? That would be uh, quite a good move. No, we're going to see a sinkhole. Also very useful. Remember, Emil, of course, playing three colors. So the sinkholes could kind of hurt him. There's the attack with the scavenger. Johan dropping to 18 and just a pass, missing a land drop here. So that sinkhole could be very, very good here for Johan. The question is, does he have a follow-up here? Another sinkhole or maybe Hypnotic Spectre? There's the Hippie and he took care of the Volcanic, so no access to Chain Lightning. Okay, there's a Volcanic from the top. There's a Chain Lightning. I want to say no access to Chain Lightning or Lightning Bolt, but finding that Volcanic was crucial 
for Emil here, or else he would have been in serious trouble. So the scavenger here putting Johan on 17, and he's going to tap two again. Are we going to see a him? No, we're going to see an order of the Ebon Hand finding its way here to the battlefield to 2 1 protection from white, which is not that relevant, but you can also pump it two black plus one plus oh, one black first strike. So uh, there's no attack here anymore for Emil. We do see a blue card there in hand. Can't really see what it is. I believe a counter spell. So maybe he's thinking, do I want to keep counter magic open or uh, play a burn spell on the uh, order? Yeah, he's going to go here for the chain lightning. And that's the thing with chain lightning. That's one of the... Oh, he can send it back here. He can kill the scavenger. And that's good. Wow. I think this is not the greatest exchange. I, It's easy for me at this at this sitting here, looking back at the match, because I actually played Emil that day. And you know Emil. <laughs> I made a lot of mistakes against Emil. Uh, so, you know, I don't want to... I don't mean this in a bad way, but I think I would have kept the counter spell open and just taken the damage maybe from the order. And that's also the thing I don't like about the chain lighting is that sorcery speed. We've seen Hypnotic Spectre now, by the way, from uh, Johan, which is very unfortunate here. And there's a bolt on the Curdave that uh, was being played out by Emil. Yeah, it's looking bad for Emil here because now that Hypnotic Spectre can attack and he has to di Emil has to discard a card then as well. And there's just a lot of control. There's a Wheel of Fortune. Yeah, it's going to draw seven. And I think it's a good decision here to first play the wheel because then you can attack with the hippie and immediately take a card out of his hand. But I also think if you're Emil, you don't mind this too much because you were low on lands. You didn't have an answer for the uh, hippie. So probably kind of happy now that uh, you got some new cards. It's going to drop to 14 here using a city of brass. A little bit confusing with the two rows of dice, but he's on 14, not on 34. There's the attack. And we, do, we also saw another sinkhole here. So the, the, these sinkholes are really performing well against this deck of Emil. He's so behind just uh, on amount of mana here. There's a chain lightning taking care of the hypnotic. Okay, so he's still in it, but it's going to be difficult. There's another land tapping five. Are we going to see Sulkanar, the Swamp King? No, it's a Singir Vampire. Also a beautiful creature, 4-4 four, four Flyer. And there's a Psionic Blast. I mean, there are a lot of answers in, in the deck, of course, of Emil because it's full of burn. So he can kill creatures all day, although the Solkanar is a bit challenging for him because of the five toughness. But all the other creatures in the deck he can easily get rid of. But uh, I think if you're Johan, you don't mind that too much. And also Johan, of course, has a lot of answers to creature threats. There's another Sinkhole. And I mean, this is, I think, sinkhole number three here for Johan. He's just really finding those sinkholes and they're really helping him to uh, to make the deck of Emil look so slow, even though it's a very quick deck. There's a Mishra's Factory by Emil, by the way. So he's got three lands. But look at that amount of mana for Johan. That's amazing. Going to tap two. Are we going to see him to Turek? There's a him to Turek. There's a counter spell on the him. And I mean, then you trade a him for a counter spell, which is, again, not that bad. Of course, you're going to counter. You have to. Don't get me wrong. But if you're Johan, from his perspective, like, okay, trade it to him. There's a Shatter here. Are we going to see Counterspell? Counterspell on the Shatter. And another Shatter. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, this is tough. This is tough. And Emil has really been uh, on the back foot, actually, since the start of this game. There's the pass. So no action from Johan, so I guess that's good news here for Emil. Going to go through his library, perhaps, or graveyard. Perhaps he's got a regrowth in hand. Now remember, Emil's also playing with Time Twister and Wheel of Fortune, just like Johan, so could also maybe be looking to, uh, to get some information about the Time Twister in hand. Could be another reason. There is a uh, Hypnotic Spectre, but a quick uh, Psionic Blast here on the Hypnotic. Yeah, and I was going to take away that row of dice. I already was wondering why is it there. So Emil here on 16. Did he take the damage from the Psionic Blast? I'm not quite sure. There's the pass. There's a Surrender Perfeet. So 3 4 Flyer from Arabian Nights. And again, a quick response. Like both of these players are packing so much direct damage. And it's really a thing, especially in X-Points, where you see a lot of Psionic Blasts, Lightning Bolts, Chain Lightnings. You really have to 
keep that in the back of your mind when you're brewing your deck that, that you add, in my opinion, or a little bit of life gain, or you also just have a lot of burn, like these two players both have. There's another bolt here. It's going to 10, and there is the Time Twister. I am loving these draw sevens, by the way. Really cool. So there is the Time Twister, so both players are going to shuffle. And yeah, it looks like they're uh, they're taking their shuffling time. But yeah, for both of these decks, a draw seven is so good. I mean, for Johan, it, it, I guess it works both ways because and it works really, really well with your Underworld Dreams, but it also works well with all the burn cards you have in your deck to draw more burn. And, you know, and for Emil's deck, it works really well. His deck is really fast and also has a lot of burn. So usually uh, getting a draw seven means you, especially Time Twister, means you get to uh, shuffle back in all your Lightning Bolts, Chain Lightning, Psionic Blast. You can start casting them all over again. And yeah, like I said, I think what you really need in these days in X points, you know, judging judging from this one tournament uh, where I was also playing, you really need some life gain in the deck. That's uh, that's pretty important. Or like I said, also have some bolt, uh, some sorry, some uh, some burn. You we say Emil making three piles and asking the opponent to organize it. There we go, and Johan's probably going to do the same offering here. The same thing as well. And now they're going to draw their seven cards. And the good news here for Johan, of course, is that it's still his turn. He's got three lands open. So are we going to see, for example, an uh, Underworld Dreams here? There's a land for turn. And he's going to tap two. Are we going to see him to Turek? That would be pretty pretty annoying for Emil. Not devastating, but... Okay, we're going to see it again a sinkhole. Wow, so many sinkholes this game. I mean, just look at that. Emil has, I mean, only missed a land drop once, I think. But look at it. Having, having three lands compared to the land pile of Johan. It's amazing. There's a lightning bolt on the Kurt Ape. So a quick response here to that Ape. And let's see what Johan can do now. I mean, he's got so much mana. Gonna tap two. Oh, there's a him. There's a counter spell on the him. Yeah, and I think that's important for Emil, right? To get kind of keep those counter spells to deal with the him to Turex. There's Hypnotic Spectre. Ay, 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 ay. But remember, he's got a lot of answers. Double Hypnotic Spectre. Wow. So let's see if he has a Chain Lightning because now Johan cannot send it back. Gonna tap one. Okay, there's... It's a bolt, but it does the same thing. Gonna tap two blue. Gonna play a Chaos Orb, and he's gonna flip on the Orb. On the Hypnotic Spectre, yeah, really doesn't want to lose another card. I mean, this makes sense, but this is a flip in the finals. Is he gonna hit it? It is a hit. Wow. Very cool flip, Emil. Like, very, like, okay, just got to flip. I have to be honest here. I always get kind of nervous when I'm flipping at a tournament. Especially if I uh, if I reach like a top eight or something and I have to flip there. But um, yeah, Emil cool as a cucumber. And here playing Argovin Pixies 2-1. Protection, well, not protection from artifacts, but cannot be blocked by artifacts. And damage dealt to it by artifacts is reduced to zero. There's a Paralyze. He's going to counter the Paralyze. Does mean he's going to drop to eight, I believe. There's a Terror though, and there's the pass. I think I would I would be tempted maybe not to counter the one for once. Then again, you do want to win at a certain point, and Johan is at eleven, so every point matters. That's also true. Anyway, putting Johan here on nine. Now remember, he's got a huge burn package, right? Ooh, more pressure. Surrender Pafrit hitting the board. Quick response though, Psionic Blast does mean two more points of damage for Johan. Would drop to seven so Emil's actually not doing that bad i mean you have this feel that johan has control of the game the whole time but look at the life total of johan he's he's on seven he's an order by the way of the ebon hand so great blocker for the argovian pixies there's a scavenger folk only one card in hand though for Emil. that's quite low looks like johan has two or three cards in hand there's the attack by the order could consider Chum blocking it on the scavenger, asking, of course, how big can you make it? So he can make it three, four, five, six damage. Wow. 
That is huge. Yeah, I would definitely jump it here. Does mean that Johan has to invest one black to give it first strike, though. Because it is a 2-1. Yeah, that's exactly what he does. And then passes to turn. Psionic Blast in hand. That's not too bad. Putting him on 5. He's so close with that Blast. He can put him on 1. Of course, you don't want to do that yet. You don't want to do that yet. You don't want to give that information. Untap. Upkeep. Does he want to do something in the upkeep? That's the question. Or is he talking now about the start of the turn? No. Okay. Yeah. For a moment there, I thought that he was thinking about doing something in the upkeep. There's another land here for Johan. I mean, does he have enough to kill him? Because then he's forcing Emil to use the Sleonic Blast. Let's see what he's going to do. So three, four. A little bit annoying glitches on the line again, but they will go. So that's three, four, five. And so it's now a five. Ooh, Dark Ritual. So you can give it six. I believe. One, two, three. One, two, three. So yeah, they're counting. Two more. I think he's going to get there or not. Three, four, five. Six, seven, eight. Or is it nine? Man, I'm bad at this. <laughs> anyway, there's the psionic blast. And if you're Emil, you didn't want to do this, right? What you wanted to do was just take the hit, stay alive, and hopefully find another burn spell, finish the game. But look at this lightning bolt. This is an exciting game, though. Like a lightning bolt. I think Yoan's also out of cards or not. It's hard to see with those black sleeves and the black playmat. Maybe he's got one card still. So, Johan on 5, Emil on 7. Oh, there's an Order of the Ebon Hand. Wow, is he going to win it here with the Order? Emil has to find an answer, but he was so close to that victory. There we see a Taiga. There's the pass. I wonder if he has a Lightning Bolt in hand. There's the attack. He's going to pump it here. 3, 4... Five, six. So he can deal six damage, I believe, putting a mule on one. I think he's on one. That means there's still an out. If you're alive, you're alive. One little measly life has to find a blocker or a bolt or a chain. Okay, this is good. Mishra's factory can at least block the order for one turn. Now, I do believe Emil is also playing with one fireball. So, if he can draw into that fireball, there is... Ah, oh, there's the shatter before blocks are declared. And that's it. Then he's going to win here. What's that one card in hand for Emil? What could that be? And it was... We cannot see it. Was it the scavenger? No, it wasn't the scavenger, folks. It's got to be a land or something. Anyway, uh, Johan here winning game one. But what a thriller of a match. I really enjoyed uh, watching uh, this first game, so I'm already looking forward to the second one. Talking about that, we're going to let these players sideboard, and we will catch back up with them in game number two. Game number two, here we go. So Emil on the plate after losing that first game. No turn one play for him, though. That's not great playing with a play set of Curd Apes and Scavenger folks. You would really love a turn one play, but it's just a Volcanic. There's a City of Brass and a pass by Johan. And there's a Tropical Island, gonna go into Sylvan Library, passing the turn. So the Enchantment from Legends allows you to look at the top three cards during your draw step. And you can order them any way you want. And if you want, you can draw an extra card for four life. You can do that twice. So let's see if Emil is gonna go for that option. Gonna look at the top three. We saw another Volcanic, by the way, being played out by Johan, who's also not uh, casting anything at this point. There is a Volcanic, so two Volcanics and a Trop. Surrendip would be quite nice here. Going to tap two. What are we going to see for two? There's a Time Walk. Okay, just going to take an extra turn, kind of cycling away. The Time Walk here does give him a little bit of a tempo play. He can play out another land, get some advantage there. We, rem we remember, of course, uh, the first game where we saw a lot of sinkholes, and it was quite difficult for, uh, for Emil 
to get enough uh, lands on the board. Going to find a tropical island here. So probably going to play that one out. Okay, going to go here for City of Brass. And passing the turn here back to Johan. Again, a little bit of glitches on the line, but it will pass. And Johan here playing an underground C, passing the turn. And Emil again looking at the top three. What I usually do with the Sylvan is I always have a moment where at least I take an extra. Yeah, that's what Emil does right now. Or not. No, just taking the one. Because you want to get some value out of your Sylvan. Just playing the Tropical Island, passing the turn. No creatures at all. So I guess, okay, there we can see a little... Showing the hand a little bit. I like that. Uh, I think, I guess it's full of burn, right? That has to be the case. There we see an Order of the Ebon Hand. And a quick Lightning Bolt on the Order. And that was as to be expected, right? If you have a grip full of cards with Emil's deck and you're not playing out anything, it has to just be burned or just a lot of lands. There's a Mishra's Factory finding its way onto the battlefield, so that could be quite good. It will allow Emil to finally deal some damage. Yohan here finding another underground C5 lands in total. Could start casting Sengir Vampires. Gonna go for Hypnotic Spectre. There's a pass. So again, Emil looking at the top three. But of course, he already knows the top two cards. And I wonder what he's going to do. Tapping four. Ooh, Control Magic, a card coming in, I believe, from the sideboard. That's, of course, quite good against these type of decks. But there's... Oh, a Bolt. He's bolting his own Hippie. Yeah, these Control Magics are really good. Actually, for both of the players. Uh, because, you know, they don't play with white. So they don't have any elegant answers to uh to enchantments and here we see a chain lightning directly to the dome putting Johan on 15. there's a sengir vampire oh again again some glitches on the line i think we're gonna see a double spell here so a lightning bolt and a chain lightning to get rid of that sengir was a bit unfortunate there with the glitch but there were two cards being uh, paid for the sengir so that's a hefty price to pay. We see one counter spell in hand for Emil. He could attack you for two with the factory. Or does he have a better option? Tapping three. Are we going to see a surrender here? It's Oh, it's a time twister. Okay. And it will resolve. Pretty cool. So we're going to twist. And of course, time twister is also quite nice in combination with the Sylvan Library, because you're shuffling your library, so next turn you can look at a fresh three new cards. That's always kind of nice. And here we see Johan again going for the Pile Shuffle. And Emil making the three stacks of cards. And there we go. So Emil has already drawn his seven cards. And now Johan gets to do the same. It's still Emil's turn, of course. So I think if you're Emil, the best thing here would be, well, Time Walk, obviously, take an extra turn. And other good cards would be Counter Spells, right? Because you still have two blue open, or maybe a Surrender Befree. There would just see a pass turn. 13 life for Johan, 20 still for Emil. Playing out of Badlands, just passing the turn. There we see a bolt on the life total here. Johan dropping to 10. So is Emil just going to burn him out? There's also a Chain Lightning in his hand. Going to draw one card again from the Sylvan. Finding a Taiga. I wonder if he's going to play a Surrendip or a Curdape, something to put some pressure on the board. Chain Lightning here, he could send it back. Probably doesn't want to because he's already on 7. Because if you send it back, then Emil can send it back. And look at that, are we going to see more burn even? Going to tap. Oh, glitches on the line. Oh, that's unfortunate. We're missing, we're missing so much of the finals. Oh, I can't believe it. We do see a time walk here. Let's let's have a look at the situation. Yolan's on two. There was a time walk. 
It's got the Cured Ape on there, so there was just probably a lot of direct damage shenanigans happening. There's the attack with the Ape, then he has to block, right? Gonna tap one, Chain Lightning. That's it. Okay, so game two is being won here by Emil, but how unfortunate that we missed that ending due to the glitches. Oh, that's a bit frustrating, but I think what happened here is he probably burned him almost out completely, right? Because we saw that Yohan was still alive, then cast to Kurde, then passed the turn. Yohan casting Hypnotic, then passing the turn to Emil, and Emil was able to kind of burn it all out and, uh, and win the game that way but wow game number two being won here by emil and that means we are gonna go to an all decisive game number three game number three of the big decider here in the finals of the dutch x points open remember 50 players started only two of them remain here in game number three johan versus emil and there johan playing a him to turek turn two yeah one of the strongest cards in x points taking care of a cyanic blast and an argovian pixies and yeah, this is uh, something that Johan wants to do, right? Just uh, cast those hymns as early as possible, also in a combination with sinkholes. And then uh, go for a hippie, for example. Let's see what he can do here in turn three. Because Emil just played a land and passed. There is Hypnotic Spectre, but a counter spell, it seems. And a pass turn. So that's important. I, I have to say, Emil is doing a great job at kind of taking care of those Hypnotic Spectres. But not finding a red source, though. Here's a Mishra's Factory passing the turn. So if he doesn't have red, he cannot play Curd Apes, cannot play Lightning Bolt Chain Lightnings. So let's hope for him that he can find it quickly. There's an Order of the Ebon Hand here by Johan. And is that a Psionic? Yeah, that's a Psionic Blast. It's a hefty price to pay, though. And it looks like Emir is kind of not happy with his own play. Again, glitches on the line. Connection not that great at the moment. And finding finally a red source in the form of City of Brass. Going to play the Curd Ape, which is now a 2-3 because of those two tropical islands. So the Curd Ape is having fun on the island. And that's a pretty strong ape now, 2-3. So it could start attacking next turn. Or are we going to see a quick bolt here by Johan tapping the city? Oh, blue elemental blast from the sideboard. And uh, Yohan here taking his turn, drawing a card for turn, just passing on though. Not finding a creature threat. There's a strip mine. And just a pass, so just a strip, that's it. Passing the turn. Johan tapping three. Underworld Dreams, haven't seen that card at all by the way. So this is the first time in the match that we're seeing the Underworld Dreams, and I think it's going to be really good, could be really good in this uh, in this matchup. There's a strip on the City of Brass. There's the attack for two. And there's the pass. I'm liking that play because you're taking care kind of of a, of a land, and also you're waiting with animating until the strip is uh, the city is gone, so you cannot bolt it, so you've got a free attack for two as well. Drawing a card here, by the way, going to 15 because of the Underworld Dreams. Checking the library, or sorry, the graveyard. Does that mean he's got some uh, a regrowth in hand, for example? And I believe that is a regrowth. Yep, that's a regrowth. Going to go for the Kurt Ape. Regrowthing the Ape, putting it on the board. And animating going for two, so playing quite aggressively. There we do see a Shatter here on the factory. And Johan's still pretty high up eh, with 17. He is low on lands though, missed a few land drops. So that strip on the city was a really good decision. There we see an Order of the Ebon Hand, great blocker for the Kurde because he can give it a, well actually not because it's only a 2-1. I wanted to say he can give it first strike, but Kurde is of course a 2-3. Bolt by the way on the order. There's the attack, so Johan on 15. And remember, this is the deciding game. Ooh, there's a Paralyze. He's not going to untap it, though. Passing the turn. Going to take a damage. Going to go to 11. And there's a Volcanic passing the turn. What is that? There's a Psionic Blast on the life total here. Of Yo and also taking, of course, for Emil, also taking a damage from the Underworld Dream, so he's now on 8. 
Gonna go to seven, and now he's gonna make a decision. Am I gonna untap the ape for an extra two points of damage? The problem is you're gonna make this decision before you draw a card, so, you know, I get it. It's, it's a tough decision. There's the attack for two. Oh, but there's the terror, though. So taking care of the ape. A mule on seven, Johan on 11. Oh, there's a bolt. It's gonna drop to four. If he has a psionic blast, Johan is the winner here of the Dutch X points. If he has it, though, Tapping three. Oh, it's not. It's a time twister. I thought it was going to be a psionic blast. Time twister here. But he's got... Oh, of course. He does have the Underworld Dream. So that means he is winning it. And again, Johan wins it here on Underworld Dreams in combination with the time twister. And he also wins the title. Johan is our X points winner of the Dutch Open. And here we see his winning deck. Congratulations, Johan, for winning the event. Great, great, great. Well, well done. And uh, it's really nice to see you pilot your deck and to see how you're using those draw sevens in combination with the Underworld Dreams. And uh, thank you so much for showing your skills here on the channel. And also, of course, to Emil. You were so close, man. Just losing it 2-1. You've built a great deck as well. And uh, yeah, that's it. This is the video series of the Dutch X-Points Open. I would like to thank Luki for organizing the event and, of course, creating the whole format, man. Um, it's always a lot of fun to come and visit uh, to these uh, tournaments and i'm looking forward to join you again next year and i would also like to thank you for watching another video right here on timmy talks the channel where we talk old school magic and if you've enjoyed the show please leave a like comment and share it on your socials all these things are free and really help the channel move forward and talking about moving forward you can also become a patron of the show check out patreon.com slash timmy talks for more information and if you become a patron your name will be mentioned in the end scroll really what end scroll this end scroll